and the Spirit of Community Award winner. This is NBC 10 News Today. Good morning and happy Tuesday. It's 6 a.m. I'm Chelsea Jones. And I'm Adam McAllister. Only two days away from Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Turkey Day, as you've been calling it. Yeah. Which is awesome. Guys, what are you turkey. thankful for? That's a great question, Chelsea. <laughs> um, uh, my life and God and everything in it. Okay, Lex. Yeah, family, f friends, God, you guys. <laughs> That's so sweet. What about you, Chelsea? Definitely the same. Life, health. Friends, family, love, all that. Yeah, yeah. all the small things. All yeah. the small things. I think mm -hmm. that's what happens when you get older. You realize, like, little things don't matter. So yeah, much. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That was a great question to start off. Good vibes. Good vibes. Yes. Today. <laughs> Definitely. But, also um, good or but, not good? Yeah. We always do. We're like, tell us about the weather. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so definitely going to be a little bit of a uh, kind of a crazy day today. It's not going to be extreme or anything. It's just going to get a little bit uh, shower and thunderstorms by later on this afternoon. Again, some of these could be a bit on the strong to severe side, especially for folks living in the northeast Arklamis. So, again, on top of making sure you have your rain gear on hand as you head out the door, just make sure you are staying weather aware. Well, thanks to the cloud cover this morning, our temperatures have been sitting nice and mild in the lower 60s. Winds are coming out of the south-southeast at 7 miles per hour. That is your forecast first. A suspect is still on the run after a deadly shooting happened in Tallulah over the weekend. One person is dead and six others are injured and police are asking for the public's help to find the killer. NBC's Brian Briggs has more. Tallulah is still reeling from a weekend shooting at a local nightclub known as Club Peg. At the time of the shooting, the club was holding an event themed after the popular Purge movies, but officials believe at this time there is no correlation between the event and the shooting. An altercation between two individual male subjects and somehow another one of the male subjects went to the car and, and got a gun and fired into the crowd. Officials say one person was killed and six others were injured. It's just so sad because I just cannot understand how come we can't go out and have a very good time? There's not a lot to do in Tallulah until it turns into a shooting or someone getting shot, someone getting killed. The shooting also hits close to home for Mayor Gloria Hayden. The young lady that got killed uh, was part of my family. Now, many details of the shooting are still under investigation, but city officials say that they're going to be doing what they can to make sure a shooting like this does not happen again. The Tallulah Police Department will begin enforcing new rules on events. The city also sent the club a letter to cease all operations until the owner comes before the city council. We're going to be a little more vigilant about activities like this where liquor or anything is involved. They have to get it approved through me from now on. And in that instant, I can you know, provide adequate security. But residents are skeptical about seeing changes. So much crime going around. They ain't never stop killing them all the time. They ain't never stop. They need to so tighten up on them. In Tallulah, Brian Briggs, NBC 10, your local news leader. It took two police chases before police arrested a man they say stabbed someone in Ruston. 50-year-old Garrett Carreria is accused of stabbing 36-year-old Joshua Tibbs to death. Richmond Paris deputies say it took a car chase before Carreria was arrested this or yesterday morning in Rayville. Police say the original crime happened in Ruston early Sunday morning. In a separate police chase, Ruston officers pulled over a car on Highway 80 where they found Tibbs with stab wounds. He later died at the Northeast Louisiana Medical Center. Carreria will be charged with one count of second-degree murder once extradition is completed in Lincoln Parish. Louisiana State Police are investigating a deadly crash on I-20 yesterday morning. Police say around 840, 50-year-old Regina Watson was heading west near Ravel when her car veered into the median. Police say she overcorrected and her car overturned. She died at the scene. Investigators say she was wearing her seatbelt. A month after Anaya Blanchard disappeared, investigators discover human remains during their search for the missing teen. The 19-year-old was last seen at a convenience store in Auburn, Alabama on October 23rd. Her car was found two days later in Montgomery, which is about an hour south of where she disappeared. Authorities found blood in the car and forensic testing determined it was Blanchard's. Two men have been charged with kidnapping her. Hundreds of volunteers spent weeks searching for her. The remains were found in a wooded area of Macon County, which is between Auburn and Montgomery. The body will be tested to determine if, in fact, it is Blanchard. On to a news update this morning. An undocumented immigrant who's been a construction worker in New Orleans for nearly two decades is about to be deported to his native Honduras. His lawyers say it could be linked to, or to a response to allegedly um, botched construction at the Hard Rock Hotel, which collapsed and killed three workers last month. Susan Rogan has more. 
This is Joel Ramirez Palma, an undocumented metal worker, just after the collapse of the Hard Rock Hotel. He's speaking to a local Spanish newspaper, Jambalaya News, about how he survived it. And when he's asked what caused the collapse, he says he really doesn't know. But Joel's wife says Joel had complained five times to his supervisors before the collapse that the construction was substandard and dangerous, and she says he barely got out alive. Del ocho saltó al piso siete, y de ahí dice que él no recuerda lo único que recuerda del... And from the eighth floor, he jumped to the seventh floor, and on the seventh floor, he lost memory of what happened after that. He says that the next thing he remembers is that he uh, was drinking water, that somebody was giving him water because he uh, couldn't really breathe. Two days after the disaster, Border Patrol agents arrested Howell and turned him over to Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Now he's locked up in an ICE detention center. And one of his lawyers says it won't be long before he's sent back to Honduras. What is your gut? Is he going to be kicked out of the country this week? If it's purely immigration-based, he'll likely be deported. And seeing what ICE has done, even with other campaigns like this, um, unless something happens on the, other, on the labor side of his claim, I don't see there being a way to stop his removal. According to his lawyers, Howell has no criminal record, and he's been in contact with ICE for years, working through the court system to try to stay in New Orleans. So why the rush to deport him now? Howell's wife and supporters are convinced that he's being deported because he was a whistleblower here at the Hard Rock Hotel. They claim ICE is under pressure to take him away. But a spokesman for ICE, Brian Cox, says in an email, no way. The allegation of any correlation simply is not true, period, he says. This agency had already denied his stay request prior to the Hard Rock incident ever taking place. Cox goes on to say that the unsubstantiated sensationalist allegations are irresponsibly spreading fear through misinformation. Howell's wife agrees there is fear. Fear, she says, will keep other workers from speaking up about what they think happened in the Hard Rock collapse. On to some new information this morning. People in Mississippi no longer have to cross over into other states to play the lottery. Scratch-off tickets went on sale in the entire state of Mississippi yesterday morning. Next year, residents will also be able to buy Powerball and Mega Millions tickets. The state didn't have lottery for years because of strong opposition from churches. In 2018, lawmakers passed legislation allowing the lottery. Alabama, Alaska, Hawaii, Nevada, and Utah do not have state lotteries. And so to come on NBC 10 News, today. More impeachment hearings could happen on Capitol Hill as a federal judge rules that a former White House lawyer must testify. We tell you what's next for the impeachment inquiry and how Republicans are reacting to the ruling when you return. But first, here's Lexi with a look at your commute cast.